It's a coupe SUV from Audi, the RS Q3. If you're wondering why I'm standing this way, the wind is coming from that way at a pretty fierce rate. So I've got a card so that I can remember just what this RSQ3 has in it. And it's got Quattro. So it's got Audi's four wheel drive system, a seven speed DSG automatic, and you know what I think of DSGs, but it does offer snappy transmission changes, etc., etc. The power from this five cylinder engine is 294 kilowatts and 480 newton meters. The zero to 100 is 4.5 seconds. 4.5 seconds and this car is 102,900 as tested. It's got no extras, it is as it comes because it is, as I say, a special edition. The exterior, Kronos grey, mm. and it's metallic. I'm not a big lover of grey cars. They look a little bit, I don't know, a little bit bland. But they've been able to make this SUV shape in coupe form work. And by coupe, I mean they've kind of chopped off the useful bit at the back that SUVs normally have, even little tiny ones. It does make the space a little bit less practical than it would otherwise be, but I think it makes the cars look better. Audi's been able to make the shape work other German brands, not so much. The wheels, 21 inch wheels on this tiny little car and privacy rear windows. And all privacy means that all these windows at the back are really darkly tinted. This is an angle that I think RSQ3 is particularly successful. As soon as you see that RS badge, you know that you're in for something special. And this really does feel quite special. I like the fact that the badging is blacked out. It's a little bit unusual. And this is kind of one of those European style New South Wales number plates, just in case you're wondering. There's a bunch of other stuff as well. There's the lower Valance that's got a diffuser built in and fancy exhausts and what have you. All of which will be a moot point once all cars are electric. Now inside is quite a modest affair. There's 40, 20, 40 split rear seats that fold down flat with the floor. But if you lift this up, there's nothing under here but what looks like a very small spare tire. That's in fact part of the audio system and the battery and some tools, including the inflation kit. The silver, or the chrome I should say, skid plate looks really nice. It adds a touch of class. And just over here in the well is an upward facing 12 volt outlet. But most importantly, the tailgate has a close and a close and lock button. So you don't have to schlep around the front when you put your groceries in. But the back seat, oh, let's see if I get in, is blimey, snug. Okay. I had to put the front seat forward just a little, but have a look at this carbon fiber detailing. But it does make the back feel rather enclosed. There's a honeycomb stitching on the seat. A 12 volt outlet, a couple of USB-Cs, there are only USB-Cs in this car, and some air conditioning. I'm not quite sure how far I'd like to go in the back of this. This does feel, because it's all black, very, very enclosed. It does feel cozy, but I'm just not quite sure. What I like about the front is, I can make that come up again. There you go, little RS there, and they've kept this nice and clean. There's just a couple of controls down here for air conditioning. Now, again, I can't find a sync button. I had the e-tron last week and it was hidden in a menu. I've looked in the same menu and it's not there. Down below that, we've got the engine start stop, radio volume on off and forward and backwards, the drive select, which is the drive modes, and the auto on off, stop start, let's stop that, uh, the parking sensors and so forth. And this is the seven speed DCT selector, brake hole, so in traffic, you don't have to keep your foot on the brake, and the parking brake, which comes on automatically when you turn the car off so that you don't have to worry about running over somebody. This little Quattro, the Quattro symbol is part of the lighting display at night and it sits in the middle of this 
absolutely beautiful carbon fiber insert, but that is scratchy. That is scratchy. And that's scratchy. I did not expect scratchy plastic in a $100,000 car. The speakers are Sonos and the Volkswagen Group's famous adjustable armrest, which is possibly my favorite feature in any Audi. The speed limit and smart cruise control are on a separate stalk, leaving the steering wheel nice and simple. There is an RS button, which of course brings up a different style of dash. However, I'm not entirely sure I'd want to use that around town. Pulling back the gear lever, don't know if you can hear it, but it changes the revs. All right, so we're in sport. As I put my foot down, it'll let go. It is much, much snappier with Sport Engage than it is otherwise. It does have fairly smart damping. That changes as you change drive modes. It's adaptive. Oh dear, everything fell out of the glove box. It fell open. Oh dear, dear, oh dear. Beautiful absolutely beautiful in those bends it is almost as if it is psychic indicate and let's go drive mode dynamic It makes the gear changes unbelievably snappy. And the RSQ3 turns from this mild-mannered, humble little road-going sports wagon to this snarling beast. Although having said that, the zero to 100 isn't exactly net neck snapping. It just I'm not that fussed on drive modes that need fettling on a screen. You can scroll through, you can push the button and just keep pushing it, but you're still not quite sure what it is you've selected. The lane control button is sneakily hidden here on the end of the indicator and light stalk. If you're not used to it being there, it can be a bit difficult to spot. That five cylinder engine is just absolutely divine. Five cylinder engines never were particularly popular and the turbo on this one is quite laggy. And you can feel that surge as you put your foot down, which can be a little bit off putting to some. Earlier in the week we took it up through some fairly tight turns and I have to say it was just a joy to drive. Keeping the revs up keeps the engine in that sweet spot and like four cylinder engines it really does need to be worked in order for it to give you the maximum. But it's like a nippy little terrier, it just wants to give you more and more. I did an airport pickup in this, uh, the boot isn't as big as you might think. So then the question becomes, is the RS Q3 from Audi worth the money? Well, it's certainly very quick. It's under five seconds to 100, which is pretty good in anyone's language. The interior is immaculate. There are some scratchy bits though. The tops of the doors are nice and soft, but then the bottom doors, mm, not so much. And the other thing is I've been into the, let me show you on this. I've been into the menu and I've tried to turn off all of these points of interest, which is fuel stations and coffee shops and so forth, and I simply cannot find a setting in there for it. I know it's there, I just can't find it. Now you'll notice that I do have wireless Apple CarPlay, which of course I'm going to be on most of the time anyway. 
I'm just an Audi fan, I think. The design, Audi has it all over BMW and Mercedes. There isn't an equivalent Jaguar. I think it's worth it. I'd have one. And that's all this week from the Audi RS Q3. It is an absolute peach to drive. Is it worth 102 grand? Well, that's something only a buyer can decide. In any case, hit like, leave a comment, and just over there to subscribe on the little round thing.